In this lesson, we are going to talk about setting up alerts and subscriptions. When setting up alerts and subscriptions, we need to create rules that will trigger those alerts. It should be mentioned here that there are also some default rules. As for the rules we can create, they are of three types. We can set them in stream sets and they can be configured at the pipeline level. All in all, the three types of existing rules that we can create are the following. Metric rules, data rules, and data drift rules. Data rules are used to inspect the data as it passes through the pipeline, while data drift rules are set for monitoring the schema as the data passes from stage to stage. As we said before, the alerts are based on rules. These rules trigger the alerts, and they can inform us in three ways. First, we can be informed by monitoring the pipeline, that is to say we can go to the UI and monitor it. Second, there are webhooks which can be set up and make a webhook call. Third, we can also send our emails when the rules are triggered. Now it is time to go into each of the rules and get more detail about it. Let's start with the metric rules. These rules gather statistics about the pipeline, such as pipeline idle time or error record counts. They collect statistical data about the pipeline and provide an alert whenever they are enabled. We need to set up what kind of alert to trigger. It should be one of those three mentioned earlier. We can either see the alert in the UI, or send a webhook, or send an email out. All in all, rules reactivate the statistics of the pipeline in real time, that is to say of the real pipeline. Some error examples include too many bad records where alerts work like a threshold that can be set for a specific number of bad records, error records, or system-related issues, such as memory limit exceeded. The relevant alerts can be triggered based on the rules that you can set up. Later on, we will see some of the pertinent cases. Now it is time to move over to the data rules. These rules inspect the data and gather details about the data as it passes from stage to stage. They can be configured from the rules setting of a pipeline. We can set them between stages. To do so, click on the link between the two stages. You will see a pop-up window from where you can create a new rule or edit an existing one. We will be able to get into more detail further on during the demo. Now let's move over to the third type, data drift rules. These rules trigger an alert based on the changes in the schema of the data, namely of the data definition. They also inspect the data as it passes between two stages, but from a schema point of view. Here an alert or a meter can be provided. A meter is a chart within the UI. All in all, we can set up a drift rule solely to monitor the data. We don't necessarily trigger an alert. Such rules indicate when the structure of data changes and data drift functions inspect the schema of the data. Schema is the structure of the data. There are data drift functions for creating data drift rules provided by expression language. Thus, we can leverage the stream set's expression language for creating the data drift rules. Specified field types can be used with each function. Suppose there are four data drift rules, and you set a specific name and want to see that name has changed for a specific field, or that the field order has changed. So let's say that from one stage to another, the accepting stage was expecting fields, such as first name, last name, and birthday, but then the stage sent the fields in a different order, for example, birthday, last name, first name. So you can create an alert. All the data is still there, but the fields are out of order. Also, the number of fields and the field's data type can be inconsistent. For instance, you expect a numeric field, but you get a text string field instead. Let's remember the types of alerts that can be triggered when rules are broken. We can perform pipeline monitoring, send alerts via webhooks or email. There are other events that can trigger a notification to webhooks or email. For example, when the pipeline status is changing into a running one, or if the pipeline has a start error, a run error, or else it has stopped, finished, disconnected, or it is connecting. If we are using email alerts, we want to judiciously use them and we don't want to overuse it, as there may be a rule that gets triggered very frequently, and it can send a lot of emails. A good practice is to use emails only if it is going to be a rare type of alert. Usually, we are using webhooks or pipeline monitoring. We can also find our alerts from the REST API. We can use the REST API to see if any alerts have been triggered. 
Now let's talk about configuring notifications. In the Notifications tab, you can indicate the email ID, at webhooks, and specify where your notifications should go. All in all, this is a general description, and we will be able to see more detail during the demo. Once rules and alerts have been looked at, it is time to observe some other features, such as subscriptions and events. Subscriptions listen for control hub events and then complete an action when those events occur. Suppose a user commits a draft pipeline to publish that will trigger an event. An action can be completed in the system or by the user. Thus, you can subscribe to the type of event where a pipeline is being committed. Or else you can create a subscription that sends a message to a Slack channel or emails each time a job status changes. As for the events, a control hub event is used to trigger a subscription. You can create a subscription for a single event type or for multiple event types. Speaking about notifications, we need to understand that after an event triggers a subscription, it performs an action, such as using a webhook to send an HTTP request to an external system or sending an email. All in all, notifications or actions you can take when the events are triggered result from an event subscription you have created before. Remember that you can subscribe to a webhook or an email. We will see those features more in detail during the demo. What are the different event types? Let's mention them. Job status change, pipeline committed, pipeline status change, report generated, data SLA triggered. For example, data has not arrived, or there are not enough records that have been received. And lastly, data collector not responding. All the events can be configured and can be subscribed to. Talking about event filters, we need to know that a comprehensive set of filters is available. You can filter specific events using expression language. Suppose that an event that you want to filter is job status change, and you want to only filter the events with the status containing inactive. We can see different examples of filtering down to specific event types. It may be a specific job name, a specific pipeline that has been committed. When you subscribe to pipeline events, you can subscribe only to specific ones. You can also push predefined parameters in the UI available for usability and filtering. On the whole, filters can be parameterized. And now let's go to our lab's environment and create an alert. Going into one of our pipelines, we can see an example of a simple pipeline. Notice here some general data, first name, last name, and city. We are going to inject some error records. And now it is time to set up some rules. Here we are going to create a new rule. Below you can choose one of the types of rules. Look at the metric rule. Here we can see different types of metrics. Observe the data rule. We can specify in the stream field where the monitored data is coming from. Here is the data drift rule. With the help of it, we can monitor the schema or the structure of the data. And now let's look at the existing rule, a metric rule. Here are the records. Tick high incidence of records. Notice that it will be turned on if the number of records is more than 100. If this is the case, an alert will be triggered. You can also edit this rule. This metric type is counting the number of errors in the overall pipeline. As you can see, there are many different types of counters. We can send an email specifically for this metric rule, but we are not going to do it now. Here we can set up notifications and webhooks. While in this section, we can indicate a webhook URL. And in this field, we can specify the authentication type. Now it is time to run the pipeline. To be able to see it in action later on, we need to enable it now. Notice that it has turned green immediately. Now we should see an alert very soon. Once the pipeline is run, we start seeing the error records. Notice the alert being triggered. Now we are going to check all the alerts. The alert works for the pipeline we selected, but it is not in the system because we haven't run this pipeline as a job. While testing, there are several ways to check alerts. For instance, checking it through the monitor menu. And now let's go back to our pipeline. In order to run our pipeline as a job, we need to check it in that is to say publish and create a new job. Open the new jobs window and call it job for simple pipeline 
Alerts. We don't need to indicate anything in this section as all the settings are default, so we will just click Next. Now we are indicating the data relevant for the data creation, but our main focus is creating an alert. Thus, we are going to speed through this section. Now let's start monitoring a job. Having run the job, we can see that the alert has been triggered by the conditions in the rule being matched. We can view it in the UI. Moving over to the Alert menu, we can find it there. We are going to select and acknowledge it. Thus, the alert will disappear. In this video, we have seen how to set up alerts and subscriptions. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for you to try it yourself.